Welcome to the Tri-City Herald um, Edit Board with Franklin County Commissioner Clint Didier and uh, Challenger Rick Miller. Uh, I'm Cicely Rexis and I am the editorial page editor for the Tri-City Herald and we also have Jack Briggs, retired publisher from the Herald and Lori Williams, executive editor from uh, for the Herald. Um, Commissioner Didier, I'm going to let you start with your two-minute opening and then it'll be uh, Rick Miller's turn. So would you just start talking, uh, Commissioner Didier, whenever you want, and I'll press the button. So in time you. Well, thank you very much, and I appreciate this opportunity to address the editorial board. Uh, I am Clint Didier. I'm running for uh, my second term for District 3 County Commissioner. And my one of my powerful statements is I'm standing for your inalienable and constitutional rights. In my first four years, I stopped the needle giveaway program that was handing out needles in front of 4-H and FFA or uh, participants down at the uh, WSU building, defeated the redistricting lawsuit that was going to uh, point the finger at Franklin County as being a racist county, and we're not. Uh, I push for transparency in government, and that is night meetings for people that work, and uh, videotaped and audio taped for people that want to listen at home. Um, I've been endorsed by the Franklin County Assessor, John Rosanoff, the Auditor, Matt Beaton, the Coroner, Curtis McGarry, the Clerk, Mike Killian, Treasurer, Josie Kelzer, Sheriff Jim Raymond, former Sheriff Richard, Richard Layman, Latham, Franklin County Republican Central Committee, and the Tri-City Association of Realtors. So I have got a great list of endorsements there, and I have incredible news about who we've just brought on to be our new HR director and our uh, interim uh, administrator. So thank you very much. Great. Thank you. Let me just reset the timer. And um, Okay. Rick Miller, okay. your turn. Thank you to the Tri-City Editorial Board. I am pleased to be here, and thank you for hosting this uh, forum today. My name is Rick Miller. Many of you voters may remember previously as if I was a Franklin County Commissioner for 12 years. Now I'm running again. My family and I were enjoying the private life, but we've all seen what's happening in Franklin County. The expensive lawsuits, the frequent resonations, the toxic environment in hostile behavior. I hope we have plenty of time to discuss some of the important issues that impact the citizens of Franklin County, but the election is more basic than that. We are failing at the fundamentals. My opponent and I are both Republicans, and I'm sure we agree on a lot of things, but where we differ is the basics, how to treat employers, employees, how to treat other elected officials, respect for the law, and the proper stewardship of taxpayer money. We have a crisis in Franklin County, and that's why I am running. Thank you. Great, thank you. So I'm going to just start right out of the gate, um, Mr. Miller. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we, um, you know, we hear all kinds of things, and we heard that um, you moved into a new home just before filing in order to be in Commissioner D Didier's district. And I'm, we just need to get that cleared up. What, what's the story there? I um, owned that home for four years. My parents, who were 88 and um, 85 lived there and they transport to my sister's house and sometimes stay with me but i have that house we are planning we were planning on selling the second home the original home years ago actually waiting for one of my daughters from florida maybe to move in and have it for her but at the same time uh we're looking at selling this and that's something we want to do i am fixing the house up i am not um living there i have not um uh, I, I'm just rebuilding, doing some work with the, what's going on right now. I am, I am not I'm too busy to actually do the remodeling that I want to do, replacing some parklets and doing some other work. But no, I live at 3821 Des Moines Lane, Pasco, and that's where I've stayed and uh, and actually helped my parents when they're there. 
Okay, so the the house that you're living in now is is in Mr. Didier's district, Correct. Correct. and you've lived there how long? How long? When did you move? Uh, you know, I it's off and on for a long time that I've lived there for over a year. I've uh, I've lived there. Uh, my dad broke his hip. My mother fell and bruised, bruised her legs. Then my dad ended up uh, breaking his fibia and fibia and tibia bone. Mm, so okay. I I have to assist them. I, they don't have driver's license. They don't drive. I take care of them in that sense. I do okay. quite a bit with them. Okay. Well, thanks. We just needed to get that mm. cleared up right away. I think so. Thank that you. was one, one of the top things we needed to make sure we fit in. Thank so, you. so um, Matt, did you? Oh, he's muted. I'm not gonna. <laughs> I'm gonna just keep asking questions then. So, um, so Rick, why don't you elaborate just a little bit on? on your reasons for running again. Um, do you have anything really specific? Was there anything, um, yeah. you know, you're, you're tying generalities, I guess. And sure. I'd like to know if you've got anything that really stands out and then we'll let Commissioner Didier respond to that. Okay, well, first of all, there is a couple of things actually. One is just the treatment. I've watched the meetings and how, what an embarrassing situation to have the fighting and the slamming and the, uh, pointing fingers and nothing has that done. I disagree with Commissioner Didier. Nothing's been done uh, out of the formation of just your minutes passing and things like this. When we talk about Mr. Didier um, actually in stopping the needle exchange, well, let's talk about that first. That was four years ago. Um, that's a long time ago. It's done. And he's wrong with that. It was not a Franklin County program, it was a Benton. Franklin Health District program. Franklin a County allowed who the, the Benton Franklin Health District, who was leasing the office, to build to to rent and, and have that pilot program, a pilot program that was going to last six months. If I would have been there, I would have stopped too, especially for what we found out later. But all the things we have read about it and all the things that are going on. It was an opportunity to try and stop what's going on in Pasco. And there's a lot, it's a drug hub in Pasco. I was a Metro uh, task force. I was involved in a drug court and we know that was a major place. Wrong that it affected the 4-H people, kids, because it was only open four hours a week, Friday afternoon, four o'clock on. Well, maybe some kid came in there and I usually they closed at 4.30 that day, you know, whatever. It's just, uh, that's just kind of an embellishment on how bad this thing was. What stopped it finally is we found out that there was one needle supposed to give it for one needle. It ended up being 10 were given to one. And so the commissioners at that time stopped it right away when they found that out. You're not going to tell me Mr. Didier convinced Bob Cook, Commissioner Bob Cook and Commissioner Brad Hack to change their mind. It was that instant that changed that mind. Um, uh, it, it would have been stopped no matter what. It was a pilot program. It didn't cost the county a penny. I drove down there, looked that night. I looked at uh, afternoons. I didn't see the stream loads of people that people were saying, uh, embellishing on that also. I would see three or four people maybe at the time stand in line. And, you know, it wasn't as big as a story, I believe, not what I ever saw. Now, we got some, some of his partners saying that they were lines of people and they were going to bathroom streets, I, the, the mission is right there. It's still happening if that's the case. It wasn't for that reason. But what I want to explain though, is we still have a drug problem. I know people in the farmer's market, I've been there for a number of times here in the list this fall, and they have, I know personally complains, they find needles still in the alleys there. So my question is what has Mr. Didier done to solve this problem. I at least tempted something. I at least tried to work at something. And to be honest with you, it's shameful that okay. four years ago we start talks about that. Okay. 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 I think it's time to let Mr. Didier okay. have a have a turn at that. Is there any anything you want to want to say to that, Commissioner? Yes. Thank you very much. It took a motion by Mr. Miller and a second by Mr. Peck. And Mr. Cook was gone, but they passed this needle giveaway program and it was implemented right down there at the WSU branch building. And yes, there were people down there. I went down and sat too and I watched 
the WSU building actually had to lock their door because they had drug addicts coming in there asking where the needle giveaway was, was at. Uh, this was a problem. And it, it took a room full of people, several meetings in order for Mr. Peck to get the, the gist of it, that we wanted this out of Franklin County. And yet, um, Walla Walla was bringing these needles over there, uh, health, the health clinic over in Walla Walla, and they were pushing for more, to give away more. And we finally won the day and got rid of it. What else have I done as a commissioner? Well, I pushed for transparency in government. I got night meetings. Mr. Cook even admitted that was the first night meeting he ever remembered, the first one we had, and the room was full. Uh, these, this audio and visual for the internet, that, that was done before COVID. So that was in place before we had COVID so that we could keep having meetings when they were trying to shut down the, the meetings for the public to attend. Uh, as, as chairman for the last two years, I've taken the emergency front fund from 500,000 to 2.1 million because we stayed open during COVID with our licensing and with some other things, we made up some big ground and brought in money. Currently we are growing exponentially and the roads are still behind. When I first went back to DC, I remember the house that I lived at, it took me five minutes to get to Redskin Park. On the way home, it took two hours because it was all left-hand turns and the traffic was so bad on on uh, one-lane roads each way, just two lane, just two uh, lane roads. So I know how it can get, and I'm trying to work adamantly to not let that happen here in Franklin County with the growth that's occurring right now. We've got some big businesses moving in here. Um, I've also uh, on the uh, accomplishment side, there is uh, working with the elected officials. I've met, listened, and empowered the electeds to do their job. And that's why I got their endorsement. It, it wasn't even tough. I just asked them. Every one of them said yes. Uh, Sheriff Raymond hit it best. He says, you bring balance to the board of the commission. You bring balance. Yes, I am. I'm no career politician, nor do I want to be. I'm a farmer. I move dirt. We have cattle. Uh, I don't want to be a career politician. I ran for this because Mr. Miller called me. I met with him out at uh, Mr. Quick's Country Mark, and he showed me the maps that they were trying to push through, and he purposely didn't attend meetings, and I thank him very much for that. With a quorum, they would have pushed it through. But this redistricting is all about getting two commissioners from just the city of Pasco, which leaves North Franklin County with one commissioner which would not enable any other person from North Franklin County to try to obtain another seat. And, and through this whole redistricting lawsuit, which we won, by the way, sure, we, we had to pay 375000 which I did not agree with, and we're down to district only, uh, primary and general. But we won that lawsuit because we still have the chance of having two commissioners from North Franklin County. And there are many more things, but I'm not going to take up all the time here. So I know you have other questions. Let's move on. Okay. Are there any other questions from the from the board, uh, Lori or Jack? Yeah, I want I wonder, Rick, if you can explain. Um, we've had all these stories about dissent and everything else in, in the Franklin County Courthouse, but um, Clint has got a list, a long list, as he says, every one of them, of the department heads endorsing his race. Why, if there's so much dissent and everyone's so unhappy, why can he get so many endorsements? Well, I don't, I think it's a political situation in there. He's chairman of the Franklin County uh, Republicans. And, and if you follow those people that are in there, they're at the same thing. He's given himself $30,000 or so from the fund. You can probably see it on PDC uh, to campaign. When I was, and I was involved, when I was an official of the Republican Party, we didn't bring politics into the courthouse, first of all, but you can see there's a battle between, there's a deception. He didn't get all of the, I don't believe he got all of them. I know there's a couple that he did not get as uh, endorsements, uh, but he got more of the ones that follow him in the Republican party. That's fine. But when you bring the politics into there and and you and you help uh, provide maybe better, better uh, hiring for them and things like this, you're gonna get that support. 
Now, I will say I have heard other things uh, from other people in there uh, that probably did not endorse him. I have a list load of endorsements of, well, I've got a number of endorsements from county, uh, current county commissioners outside of the county. And they're, they're just, they're laughing at us. They say, this is the funniest, most ridiculous county. They watch those meetings. I want to bring back what we had in Franklin County. It was better than this. And I had my own mind and my own opinion and didn't follow anybody. But you can see how it works there now. It seems like there's a following. Um, I will say one more thing. Mr. Cook is, I don't believe he remembers, but we, I, as a chairman, I had the bladder pod meeting at the Franklin County at night. We had a number of meetings at night when it was an important issue. I've noticed, I've watched some at night and there's like 20 people there. So not many people, sometimes three, sometimes 13. There's not a lot of people there either. But when there's a big issue, I believe you can bring it at night so people can come in. And I, I do like that. And I even tried to get that. The videos, I think are important. That's something else I was trying to do back then. But it was the cost at then at that time that people were complaining, the commissioners were complaining about at that time. But I'm glad to see that through. Now I can talk more about um, uh, the lawsuit. I don't think we won that lawsuit. And I don't know if Mr. Didier remembers, but this $375,000 this year, and then $375,000 next year that we got to pay. It was, the, the plaintiffs had $1.4 million. Can I plug in here for a second because sure. we're getting wrong information. It's three hundred and seventy-five thousand total. It's one hundred and twenty-five thousand a year. I have not taken thirty thousand dollars from the Republican Party. They PCOs voted for me to get one thousand in the primary and one thousand in the general. That's all I can get out of it. We still have one hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars in our account that we are giving out to other candidates. Okay. Well, I heard a person who was at that meeting and and. Um said that they give 30 but they did in different ways you're campaigning for the republican party at one time and then you got some other so anyway uh the pdc has showed that and i know there's radio ads now going on so regardless of what that is i just think there when i was a pco in republican franklin county and for many years way before you i was going way back to these things i um whenever we had candidates we called them we called them invite them i didn't get one word about it and then we gave endorsements to each one of them because they're Republicans. It should be inclusive. It shouldn't be because you don't follow and you don't believe that you can't be allowed. And that's what's going on because I've attended some of those meetings, asked to be adopted county PCO. They wouldn't do it. So I ran for PCO and won. So I am in there and that's how I'm taking care of that. But but that's not true. It is um, There is finances going through some other way and you can find out maybe in the PDC and maybe radio ads and certain things like this where that money's coming from. Um, I mean, I, I, I don't know. That's just all I can say because a lot of the expenses haven't showed up yet till the October 10th or so on our PDC forms. Radio ads are being paid for by Clint Didier for commissioner. Those have not started yet. The Washington Patriots Pack, which I'm the founder of, and we're running ads for people to get out and vote. And then the Franklin County Republicans, which is come become part of it. We've had, put the invitation out there, Mr. Miller. I was hoping that you would start coming back to the meetings now. You won the PCO because we will, and you will have a vote on the next chairman. So you please, the, we, our next meeting is Thursday, October 13th. It's, it's at 7 p.m., but come at 6 p.m. You'll get a hamburger and a cob of corn, potatoes. We're going to feed people. We're trying to encourage people to come back and start voting. We had 29%, the lowest voting turnout in a long time. We've got to get people back engaged in order to save this great republic. Well, did you know that? I know people that have said the same thing I have said. They have not a couple of good people that were quite involved, and so they're hanging loose of it, and they're getting they're not even involved because the direction is not for everybody. It's for a far right situation. Well, and here's in a in, in disagreement with that. When I took over as chair, there were 17 PCOs. Today we have almost 70 out of 113. So we have multiplied the PCOs. We have great attendance. It takes at least 24 people to be there to have a quorum and uh, we're gaining strength. So I don't know who these people are. You're talking in uh, platitudes here with no names. We have no idea who you're talking about. So yeah, it sounds convincing, but we are all <laughs> inclusive. We want everybody there and please come to the next meeting. It's out here at the uh, famous 
potato cellar where we had our meetings during the COVID. Yeah. Maybe that's the reason. I have a question um, for you, Mr. Didier. The 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 issues that uh, Mr. Miller brought up about the toxic work environment and the bullying that have been raised by uh, a couple of your former human resources uh, directors. I know that you have called that into question of whether uh, you know you 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 feel that's the situation. But um, clearly, there is a perception uh, that that is the situation um, with with some of the employees. And I'm just wondering what what you're doing about um, trying to change that perception, or what you're trying to do to make sure that um, more of your employees are feeling like it's a good place to work in Franklin County, and the, and and uh, you're not losing. Uh, as many staff members. Well, thank you very much for that opportunity to address this. I've done a lot of things in my life. I've played in the NFL. I was first born and raised on a farm right here in Franklin County. I was able to go play in the NFL. Came back, helped coach Connell High School to four state championships, two of which we won. And now I'm a county commissioner and involved in politics. And I got to tell you, this is the toughest job I think that I have had in my life because there is this thing called political ploy and I am no politician as I've already stated. I'm not a career politician. I'm not as I, I don't have that slick haired back and I'm not a smooth talk and I, t I say it like it is and I come off wrong sometimes and yes, we've had some disruption in the meetings, but it takes two to tango and I've been provoked by another career politician that's been there for will be there for 16 years at the end of his term and he has he has figured a way and he he used it to antagonize me and i was told to use a gavel and i'm embarrassed by that and i came back the next meeting and i said listen that's never going to happen again and it hasn't and i have worked hard to refrain from uh taking on these little tidbits the of uh of his uh, way to get under my skin. And I, if you notice the last meeting, if you listen to it, he once again tried, but then he lost his composure at the end of the meeting. And I asked him to please keep his composure in check. Uh, this is when we learned that our next administrator, our interim administrator, excuse me, will be Dwayne Davidson. We brought him on board to help us get through this transition. And Keith is going to work with him uh, as soon as Friday he starts, and we have a new uh, HR director, and it and it troubled me when uh, those letters were put out there by our HR directors because I had a good relationship with both Carly and Eric. In fact, Eric, I talked to extensively. I said, Eric, why? Why are you leaving? And he and he told me that he he had been bullied, but it wasn't me, and that he had two friends that had just recently died and he just needed to get away for a while and i said i understand so we have hired a new hr director and her name is sam hughes and she's coming on board here soon too as people and people do leave and come in these courthouses and at these jobs and now is not the time to regress we need to keep franklin county moving forward we don't want to return to the past where there was the biggest embezzlement in the state of Washington and letters written by Rex White had to expose it. And don't be misled by the political campaign that says the courthouse isn't improving. Yeah, we've lost some good people, but the new people are bringing a fresh perspective and driving improvement. I think that... Um I think that what came out during those those letters from the from your former HR directors is that it was beyond um, your relationship um, or lack thereof with Mr. Peck, with Commissioner Peck, but more be you know at another level um, within the county. Um, and well, it actually it actually uh, uh, mentioned Commissioner Peck and I. No, I'm saying you're talking about your relationship with Commissioner Peck, and you're saying yeah. that you guys have are having some issues, right? 
and that's visible well, at, at commission meetings. But I think yeah. what those HR directors were talking about was other things happening at the, you know, at other levels in county government. And um, I'm, I guess that's what my question is, is what are you doing um, to address those issues and uh, to make sure that, you know, I mean, it, it clearly is a very challenging time to be hiring uh, employees in all kinds of businesses and government. And so what, what are you doing to try and retain some of the talent that you have right now? We have raised salaries. We are in between budgets and we've been knocked on that by the senior uh, commissioner. But I've been, I've heard this for the first four years that uh, we are losing employees to Benton County because they get better pay over there. And yet when we're going and re raising pay and adhering to what their requests are, he is slamming us in the meeting rooms that we are doing this out of budget. Well, we are doing it to retain people. So that's what we're trying to do is retain people that we have there now. And like I said, I've been meeting and I've been, I've involved myself. In fact, Monday I'm meeting with, uh, on the Hapo center, which you've probably heard about what happened at the last meeting, uh, I'm completely unaware of a lot of what's going on. And that's the way commissioner Mullen and I have felt is that we're being left out of a lot of this and, and things are happening and we're not being updated on it, but we are trying to retain the people. I have a good working relationship with everybody in there. The problem I have is in the commissioner room, in the commissioner meetings, when my buttons are pushed and I am working hard to reframe from, uh, I guess, answering the call and to keep my motions in check. So, Rick, what are you... What is your response to what needs to be done? And I think what Commissioner Didier is referring to is um, um, the staff members that have left the have, have left the Hapo Center management, and they've had to. You've had to. The county's had to scramble to hire some new management yes. at the Hapo Center. Well, I watched the meeting. You know, I watched the meeting uh, uh, on live and saw. You know, the situation yesterday it didn't look like they were too quick about. Uh, solving the problem, getting somebody in there right away because of issues with the, you know, something that I think could have been uh, shortened. We could have got somebody in there and got this thing running with an operation of a manager that could do something uh, that the commission wouldn't really have to be tending to trying to hire people. We have a manager there and it's on a meeting uh, yesterday on the video. And that's a good thing about the videos. We can see all the actions and all the hostile in the way things work. It's all there on video. It's, it's guaranteed it's, it's there. But how I think um, 100 people leave, have left, you know, a third of the force left Franklin County in this one. So there's something wrong when that's happening. There's something wrong. People don't want to leave their, leave their job. But, you know, I'm going to do what I did all the time. I went and visit with everybody. I went and visit with the employees and I would check with them and see what we could do to provide to help them with things. And if there was some issues, I would bring them back to the meeting. I did this with everyone in those previous years that I worked. And I'm not a career politician either. Clint did run about five times in in attempt to win uh, uh, you know something, and he learned a lot of good lessons by running the state, obviously. Uh, but but you know, uh, I am in care for what is best for the county, not anything else, anybody or myself. I don't have an agenda. I want to do what's best. I'm a conservative, fiscal conservative Republican, and I am trying to uh, make sure that everything's going. And what I've seen for the last four years is not a lot getting done, a lot of bashing heads and nothing getting done, and a lot of complaints and a lot of different uh, finger pointing. And I don't like it. It's embarrassing. And I've talked to these commissioners that have endorsed me, and there's uh, from Whitman County, from uh, Lincoln County. Uh, from Adams and, and and past Bob Cook, Commissioner Bob Cook, he has also endorsed me. I've got a list of those guys too. I've got a list of people. But you know, it's in uh, business leaders in Pasco. But that's not that's not what I'm getting at. It's what's getting done. Whatever the problem is, is not working. And you can't set an agenda to try and get people to follow you to make this a one-sided commission. I can see some trouble coming here, and I don't want to see the county fail. That's my reason for getting back and. Involved, and that's how I look at this thing and why I, I am running. Hey, Rick, you talked about you didn't want to see a one-sided commission. 
Yeah. And Clint, you talked about you're not a politician, but you've run an awful lot of political races. And what are you, when you look at the results of the election, um, an incumbent like Euclid should, I would have thought, would have got more votes than what you got. You know, it's not split. You were only like the split of difference about 500. Um, Clint, you're not a you're not a Republican Franklin County commissioner. You're a Franklin County commissioner for everyone, not just for the exactly. Republicans, but for the Democrats yep. also. What are you doing? There's obviously a split in the county when you look at the vote totals. What are you mm -hmm. doing to reach the other side instead of some of the what some people thought was pantomime playing around on the on the on the dis on the uh, mask issue? What are you doing to cross that barrier and pulling on I mean, dealing with all of the people in Franklin County and not just the right side of the Republican Party? Well, uh, it's good that you asked that question because uh, actually after they've read some of the, the editorials and they've seen these YouTubes that are snidbits of what truly transpired, I've got people calling me and offering me and my fundraising I'm up over $20,000 of fundraising right now from individuals. And the most I can receive from any individual is a thousand. Um, I've got some well-known Democrats that are helping my campaign, asking me to put signs on their property. I'm not going to mention names there because that wouldn't be right. But the thing I want to also address in this is commissioner Miller's or Rick Miller said, that 100 employees have left the county. Now, there's only 275 employees in the county. And if that's the case, that would mean over a third would, been, have, would have been left. And that is not true. We have had a turnover of employees, but no 100 employees. This, this is a fallacy, another uh, accusation that's not true. I have not received but just $2,000 from the Republican Party, 1000 in the primary and 1000 in the general. I have not hit any money elsewhere. I am not putting uh, money from that Republican Party into my campaign. It is still in the bank. But I but have Clint, could, I, could, I just, could I just butt in and ask you? Absolutely. The, the gist of the qu my question was, what are you doing to unite Franklin County? Or what are your plans to unite Franklin County? improve the roads we got to improve the roads we got to make everybody have accessibility to wherever they want to go and right now we have big problems on the horizon as far as movement in franklin county uh for instance one thing over there on road 68 i have been pushing for four years for a sweeping curve for truck traffic to get over to road 100 office 68 on the dent and then down road 100 and on the freeway i-82 but it has fallen on deaf ears. I am working adamantly to get that done because when trucks try to make that turn, they jackknife and then traffic is backed up. We're getting congestion. Uh, I want transparency in government. The other thing I want to do is I want to, we're, we're facing a 30% hike in our health insurance. And I have brought out the fact that we have over 70 employees that are taking our insurance because they have a better insurance plan through another avenue. They're taking ours either in a VIVA or in salary. And the whole just of the health insurance is that every American family has health insurance. It isn't your, your ability to fleece a county government and the taxpayers for more money. If the salaries need to be increased, let's increase the salaries. Quit hiding behind the just of, a, of a, an insurance plan. That's cost in Franklin County, and we just told, got told at the last meeting that it's going to go up $350 per person. That's an additional, it's going to be $1.4 million out of the Franklin County budget to pay these people that have already got better insurance than we offer. This is some of the but, stuff but, that I've been trying again, to clean up. Well, forgive, forgive my rudeness, but no, you're not, you're not, not dealing with the issue I, I was wanting answered. So perhaps I can ask okay. Rick, you know, Rick, is there a division in the county is there a need to do something about it? And what are you going to do? Yes, I think you come together, you leave politics out of the arena, you leave it out of there. I think you come together and um, uh, work with all groups and all people 
And the lawsuit is a good example. Again, there's a lot of money wasted there and I don't care how you come to it. There was a lot of money for attorneys and all this. I will be fiscally, financially. I will take care of, 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 of the employees in a way that is fair. And even though we talk about the VIVA, that's a, that's a, that's been a thing that's been ongoing. But if everybody dropped the VIVA, they're just going to take the insurance. We're not going to be out of any money. Anyway, there's things to look at that. So, uh, you know, I, I would work with the people, everyone. And I did before when I was a commissioner. I worked with everybody. Everybody liked me. There was no problems in there. Republican, Democrat, whoever. And you get the problem solved. We are county commission. We are not, we are not to sort and be facing different people and, and, and we're not supposed to be racism or anything else involved in this. And I'm not saying there was, but we don't want to appear that way. We don't want, we want everybody to be equal. And that's how I want it to be. And I want the county to not do fabulous lawsuits that cost us money. We could have bailed out that thing way ahead of time. And, and to, when the lawsuit came, when it saw that it was a law, and that's another thing we're talking about, we're talking about laws. Don't fight and sue laws. Go work as a commissioner. Go work legislation and change those laws. But don't fight with money, with taxpayer money, because not everybody agrees with what the the lawsuit and on the, on the uh, uh, redistricting. Nobody, they don't agree. Not everybody agrees with that. So be careful with the money, and don't have a hidden agenda of how to get people out or what you're going to do. So I don't know if that answers your question, Jack, or not, but. Could I ask one more? Um, of course. Rick, um, did Trump win the last election? <laughs> you know, I thought it was awfully funny that somebody could be so far ahead that night and then lose. Because, see, I look at our trends in Franklin County, and your head, you usually, that trend follows. So I thought it was awfully odd that it happened. But until there's proof, there's proof that that has happened, and, and, and it's been fought over and fought over, you know, pictures of bags being brought in or something. That's a federal issue that I, I, I hope our county can do better than that election. I'm not going to say what I thought. In that. Well, I'm going to say I, I think we need to move on is what I think. I think. But, yeah, but Rick, you're not answering the question. Did he win the last election? No, he did not. Um, Clint, did, did Trump win the last election? It doesn't matter what I think, President Joe Biden. It matters to people who have to pick up a ballot and pick between you and Rick. There are a lot of issues that have to be taken in consideration, and this, I think, is one of them. Did did Trump win the last presidential election? Not according to the uh, outcome, as far as it was tallied. No, I'm asking about whether it mattered, whether you feel that way. I feel like our election system has been compromised. Yes. Do you think Trump won the last election? Right now, that doesn't make a bit of difference to anybody, as far as I'm concerned. What? It, Although, as, whole, far as, we're con as far as we're as far as we're concerned, you're not going to say. I'm not going to say because that doesn't have anything to do with me running for commissioner. And to bring the people together, we have got to be all inclusive. My son-in-law is Eladio Casillo. And I deal, I go up to St. Paul the Catholic's church and a uh, half of our congregation well, I think, is I think, you know, I think I got your answer on the, those other Jack, issues. Jack, okay. Excuse me, Jack. Did I, you asked if the president, and I said, did I say no or yes that Trump won the election? I said, no, he did not win the election. That's what I meant. Is that how I said it? Yes. Okay, good. good. Okay, because officially he did not win the election. Trump did not. Officially he did not. Um. I'm, of course he didn't win it. We got Biden as president. Okay, I've got a question no. for you, Commissioner. Did or Jack? What did you want to say? Did I interrupt? No. Is that okay? I just um, just this is kind of general, but I read that Rick Miller describes his leadership style as collaborative, and I was just wondering, uh, Commissioner Didier, how would you describe your leadership style? All inclusive. Like I said, my son-in-law is Eladio Castillo. I have two grandchildren with he and my daughter, uh, Isaiah and Adasa. Uh, our St. Paul the Catholic Church, we're Latino, 50%. I have a lot of friends. One of, I call uh, my brother's mechanic my brother. 
from another mother. I have a lot of friends and I love them. And we're a melding pot here in the United States of America. And either we all work together as one to make this country great, or we will die as individuals. But are you done to say? Sure. Oh, yeah. I was just going to ask um, each of you what you would look for in hiring the next county health officer to replace Dr. Person. Go ahead, um, Commissioner Didier. Uh, Dr. Pearson and I had some conflicts as far as her her numbers that she gave out because she gave out numbers and the next meeting she gave out different numbers on the same topic and I questioned her. And honestly, I didn't think we were getting good information from her. I am not, I wasn't that pleased with her as our doctor. I'd rather have somebody here more local as one of our local doctors to be our our doctor for the health board, and I'm pushing for that currently, and we've got some good candidates. Then Rick? Now, I look for somebody who's got the profession background of the medical and of the arena of, of health. And we would have to look at that and, and go through through the resumes and find what we agree. Um, I don't know if Dr. Uh, Pearson was a good fit here or not, because it, it sounded like there was some problems with uh, the numbers, but you know, she probably gets those numbers somewhere else. And I don't know, that's something they should not do. We should, that's a high paying professional job and we should have a good doctor that knows what they're going. And that's what I would be looking for. Somebody that's accountable, that's got good history and somebody that we can afford and not waste a lot of money on and not have to rehire and go through the process again. So, you know, that's, that's how I would, I would look at it. Just like a normal process and hiring that we've always done. You look at the best person that is, uh, has put a name in. So you and didn't, you didn't think that she was giving you correct, giving correct I, Franklin well, County numbers? I have no idea because I wasn't involved in there. And I just heard Clint say that and if there was no problem there, she should, that should have been researched and that should have been found. And if there was no numbers, yes. Uh, I don't know if she was or not. I cannot answer to that. I did not see them. I heard that they were incorrect. Uh, I would have to see it myself. And, um, you know, I, I mean, that's that that's just one of those things that we can say, just like somebody at the meeting said that Franklin County gave Clint, they, they donated, they wanted Clint to get $30,000. I heard that from person in the meeting. So just like that, this is what I'm hearing. So Commissioner Didier, are you saying what numbers exactly, I guess, are you wondering that were not correctly reported about well, our deaths well, or? Her. Or infection? Yes. Or? No, it was back when we first started getting into COVID, and I asked her for the last five years for deaths from influenza. She gave us numbers. I wrote them down. A couple meetings later, I asked her the same question, and I got different numbers. And I'm going, wait a minute. And I went through the numbers that she gave before. And what I had a hard time with during that whole period was the common cold and influenza had disappeared. Even though we had numerous deaths the year before and we spiked a couple years prior with influenza, which caused pneumonia and created deaths. But Dr. Pearson is not out of the picture. She has moved up to be a regional doctor. They're creating another level in the health district now. And she is going to be a regional doctor for a region over on the west side. We will have a regional doctor over us here on the east side with a bunch of other counties plus your local doctor. So it is get, becoming regimented here in the health district as far as clientele. We're going to have regional and then health board uh, doctors, and it's all, and then they all take their orders from the uh, Secretary of Health from the state. Oh, I might change the subject. I was um, going to talk about Ben Franklin Transit. Uh, Commissioner Didier, you were on the on the at the meeting where they decided. Um, actually, they decided to not take uh, take it to the voters. The uh, idea of um, reducing the sales tax, but I, I, as I recall, you were opposed to that decision. You and I think I think it was Rocky Mullen. Maybe not. Maybe maybe it was somebody else. But I, as I recall, you were opposed to that. And so I could explain that. And then I'd like to know um, 
uh, Rick, what you would have, how you would have voted on that. So. So I'm going first. Sure. Yeah, you can explain your 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 thoughts on Ben Franklin Transit, please. Yes, uh, Ben Franklin Transit uh, imposed a 0.03 percent sales tax to get it initiated, get it going, and then they in, and then they increased it at 0.03 several years later and we're at 0.06 and as of last year i believe that brought in 42 million dollars and then plus all the federal funding and the state funding we're up to 57 million now for ben franklin transit as i and commissioner mullen has mentioned too we drive around pasco we're seeing the buses the big buses running and at the most we've seen maybe four or five people uh, I was on, I sat in on the board to hire the new GM after Gloria had left. We brought in a new GM. She came from Portland in the interview process. I asked her, I said, so Portland, is it true that Portland people are sitting down and getting stuck by needles and, and the, the transit down there, TriMed is getting sued? And she said, yes. I said, how many lawsuits? And she says, a lot. And then she said, every time somebody smokes drugs or does drugs that could contaminate other people, they've got to stop the bus immediately. Everybody disboards and the bus has got to be sat empty and fumigated there before they can continue to use it. So I asked her, I said, so you've experienced this firsthand. How are you going to combat this in, in our neighborhood where we're just starting to get our uh, eyes on this type of situation? She said that she was going to be, very active in keeping them off the bus. And I said, well, thank you very much. And since she's came on board, she, Rochelle, she has uh, had 20 people from their upper echelon leave. She is not rehiring them. She has had two department heads leave. She's moving people up from the lower ranks. She is doing exactly what needs to be done. And that is to streamline the top end of the Ben Franklin transit and get it more effective and, and better for the employees, the people that we hear about, the bus drivers. The bus drivers are the ones that are out there on the front moving the people around, and they get great compliments from the audiences. When they come in, they always compliment the bus drivers. The bus drivers need to be compensated more. The top end of Ben Franklin Transit needs to be streamlined, and now they're looking at smaller buses that'll hold maybe 27 with standing, the standing occupants as well as sitting and you start using those buses which you can buy four of those compared to one of the big buses so are you saying and you're going to have three more people to, uh, to hire for each uh, place where you have one now so no, maybe, you, 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 I'm gonna, uh, maybe when you are uh, uh, doing your uh, road trips to take a look at this Maybe you need to get up earlier and see the people going to work and stay home, stay there later and see the people who are on their way home from work. All you got to do is just look at the, at the bus. Thing. Well, I don't get, I think it is, should, I think it should be at least unethical for someone in one, your use of the word uh, that this was imposed by the bus company. It was proposed, it was imposed by the voters. And then for you to and go the, in, the, and, what, go ahead. Yes, the voters voted it in, and I think it's only right that the voters should get another shot at it. They should be able to look at what the, what's going on, because every 10 years, the voters change, because people are getting up the voting age, and people are getting older and passing away. So yes, the dynamics of the vote voter changes every ten years, or even more more frequently than that. The voters put this on themselves, and they should have the chance to have the final say whether they want it to continue in these high inflation times, where food, gas, and everything else is hurting the American family and their ability to live and and buy their groceries, buy their gas, and get to work and back to work. And I'm all for helping people move, but in Pasco, and I'm only speaking in Pasco, where we're seeing these buses, these large buses, sometimes there's only one person on it. And I'm 
oh, in there early in the morning and I get in there for the, at the courthouse, I'm in there at six o'clock in the morning. Okay, well, Rick, you've been nodding your head a little bit. Did you want to say something? Sure, certainly. Well, I was on the uh, I was on a transit commission for ten years or so, and um, I, I I'm, I'm I've recently talked to Richard Bloom, past president, and he agreed, you know, on the management change, and he told me, you know, that it was a good thing the management change. We get it, we need somebody more effective, somebody that's looking downsizing, not not necessarily hires because that's not necessarily the w way to do it, but maybe. Uh, uh, personnel, maybe some friends of theirs, maybe some closeness there was going on or something. But whatever the reason was, I, I, I've i watched the buses also. And yes, I do see four or five, but I see them get off. I can see four or five get on. And then I see another stop and I see eight people sitting there, get on. And then a few more get off. So I think with the money we've spent on this project, we need to keep transit. We need to be fiscal responsible again on this subject and manage it correctly. And we need a good objector that can do that. A manager that can do that. And, and I also think that now I hear that gas, don't be surprised gas gets up to 10 or 12 bucks in the next couple of years. Who can afford that? Guess what? That bus is going to be used more. There may be some things we need to do to change or do something, maybe go electric, whatever, whatever it is. But in the future, that will happen. But I think to shut down this project or keep it tighter, I think is what we do with all businesses. We look at how we can trim things down and make it run professionally and well. And I think that hopefully is what this new manager will do. Well, that's exactly what she's doing. She is streamlining. She's being more effective with her money. And all I'm saying is we use smaller buses and take the people to the hub. When they got to go across the river, we use the bigger buses. It's all about an integral system that works effectively for the people. But you don't keep running the great big buses all over Hillendale and burning diesel, pounding our roads, and plugging up our roadways. You use smaller, efficient vehicles and try to get them to the hubs where they got to go for the, the long haul over the river. And that's so Clint, what I'm, I'm pushing for. Clint, so what happens there, when you have a board, they make that decision. Not Mr. Didier, not one other person. No, no. no I'm not. I'm, I'm, I'm only proposing it, Rick. And why didn't you attend the meetings? Because I've had people tell me that you never attended the meetings. I attended the meetings. I was a uh, manager on... on uh, uh, committees. We I ought to go back and look at the attendance list, it. Rick, because I, I heard that you didn't go to the meetings from another well, board member. Okay. Okay. You, <laughs> well, I heard you didn't go to a lot of meetings, too, by the way. I heard you're busy farming all the time. Oh. Same thing. They said that about, hey, you're on, hey, it's, it's whatever you hear people. So you can go back and forth in that. I attended meetings. I was very visible. And guess what? I'm still visible. The last few things I went out to, I didn't see Clint there. Take, for, for instance, the, um, um, mental illness thing that we just had up here for breakfast the other morning. Um, even the farmer's market, even the other activities we have going on in this county, ground breaking, uh, different things. I was always visible and I because I don't have another job that is sitting there taking my time. You have an excavating company in a farm. That's a lot of time. And I think one person should make this a priority job. Clint, if you wanted okay. to respond to any of that, I think I think you should you should have that opportunity. Okay, okay. I just want to give you the opportunity. I just want to give you the opportunity. Okay. You know, we've been talking about by county projects, you know, the transit system, everything. What's the situation as far as Franklin County is concerned with a proposed recovery center? Benton County seems to have taken the lead. Are you still involved in that? And how do you feel about it? Yeah, we are still involved in that. And my my suggestion and what I was hoping that would happen is that we'd be able to grab that uh, Kennewick, old Kennewick General Hospital and then have multiple buildings accessible. One would be a complete lockdown. The other one would be a, a minor lockdown. And the other one would be like the Formir Ministries, which they brought out here to the blocks. And I, it's a noble cause. I'm all for it. But it's going to affect the right to farm because... I talked to the Department of Ag guy over in Olympia, and he says, yes, if those girls are detained, then buffers are going to have to be put around that facility. 
And the farmer that just bought the ground for 18,000 an acre, which farmers can't afford to pay 18,000 an acre and make it work today. Uh, I don't know how he's going to make it work, but he's going to have buffers put on his field and that is affecting the right to farm. So it'll probably get pushed out of here. And that brought all these people's hopes up and then they're going to get squashed. That Kennewick general would have been a perfect campus for everything. Your psychiatrist, your doctors, your, your therapist, everybody could have went to one location, seen multiple clients in different buildings. And then the, could also have been protected by the Kennewick Police Department. It's right there, but it was affected by the the factor of money greed. And that is they were going to be in direct competition with uh, Trios and or the, uh, the, the company that owns Lady of Lords and owns Trios. They owned that old Kennewick General and they didn't want competition. So they limited the amount of uh, patients you could have. And so it sort of put a kibosh on it. So now they're looking at other avenues to put this at. But we as a community need to stand up and say, no, quit dictating to what we need for our community for mental health, for drug addiction. And let's get something that's going to be effective and efficient for our community to get people off of these drugs, a place where the police can take them to or the sheriff's office instead of their jail houses. And then they just push them right back out on the street because they can't hold them. So what, Clint, what are you doing to put the pressure on life care to come up with a reasonable price? Well, and that's what we're, we're working on. We're putting pressure on them. We're talking to them and saying, listen, we're not going to affect your bottom line. There's, there's plenty of business for everybody in this avenue. For crying out loud, I've got state troopers testifying to me personally that they have witnessed buses of people being transported over here from Seattle, from their camps over there, their tent camps, bringing them here. State troopers. He told me that because he pulled me over. He didn't see my seatbelt on. And I said, is that true? And he goes, well, those three transients right there underneath that overpass came from Seattle. I go, how do you know that? He goes, I watched him come off the bus. This is Rick, what I see you shaking your head. Rick? Yes. Take well, you know, mental illness is a you know, county and is important in the county, Mesa, everywhere, because there's problems there in, in, in farmland, uh, community in our region, Pasco, all everywhere in our region. And I'm kind of glad to see this happening because five years ago, Jerome Delvin and I met with the CEOs of boards of the hospital. And there was no interest from them at the time, those when those people at the time to really move this forward. And it just kind of got dropped the ball. But I'm seeing glad now to see that. And, and by the way, Jerome Delvin is a endorsement for me. He's worked with me well. This is one of the projects we worked on back then. And but but. Um, they're working with Life Point now, and they're moving forward with purchasing this building and putting the juvenile and the OK KGH, putting them there because I would think was part of the problem to have adult. They didn't want adult service or mental institution recovery there. But there's other buildings, the Spalding buildings, that they're going to try and purchase. And then there's another place by the Welch building over there that they're going to try and build uh, purchase. So they're 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 working on this, and this is where I believe. It is great. It is going to be a. Um, it's not going to. It's going to be a no refusal. It's going to be um, where the first stop, a one stop for all for law enforcement and emergency technicians. And I think that um, this is a benefit to them instead of filling up our jails and filling up uh, the emergency rooms, or releasing them back. I know many stories where they get back out of jail and back on the street. So this is a perfect storm building here that we can solve this problem. I was involved in drug courts and all these different things and trying as we work to get these things going, this is one I'm hoping to see be successful. We'll use the one cent tax we got to Franklin County will to purchase the beds, the space with Benton County, have 50% decision on how things are run, not on the repairs of the building because Benton County will repair those. They will purchase it, that will be their thing. So this is, um, you know, and currently private and patient uh, health treatment, they, they, they refuse people because, because they don't have insurance or something, whatever the reason is. And so now 
if with all one percent that covers that first 24 hours to where we we don't have to refuse anybody and uh, it's a one-stop facility no refusal in the first place for uh, emergency people to take i think it's just something that we need to go forward on i still i hate to say it, it's still probably gonna be another year down the road but you know i i, mean, I don't know it just depends on timing and closing things but we need to get this thing finished and take care of i like the program and, i'm sorry i want to say something else is that okay sure i i still have a problem with what i talk about these exaggerating story i saw a video where Clint, there's no proof that no state patrolman says that somebody brought these people and dropped them off. There's no proof. State patrolman, then nobody didn't said they that happened. They said he was going 80 miles per hour. It wasn't a seat belt right outside of town. I don't know where all this stuff comes from. I don't know if that's true. <laughs> Rick, no. what are you talking about? You saw the video. It was a state trooper, and it was right on the overpass, right there where Jack did. How about if I just said what, what, what are you trying to put other? What are you trying to put other stuff in my mouth for, Rick? I saw it. I saw the video in the state. Oh. Anyway, I'll, maybe I'll just send it to Harold and they can take it. Oh, the video. Too. Yeah. What anyway, video? Let's move on. There's a video out there that shows that was all false. There is no state patrol that had said that. And anyway, it just denies everything to say. And so I don't know what's exaggerated and what's not. So well, I wish you'd get your facts straight because we don't have anything with Benton County that's 50, 50 percent, Rick. It's all 70, 30. It's based on population. You should, know, you should know that would be in 12 yeah, years. In office. the future, I, did, I said in this new program, we got the beds. We can be 50, 50, 50 percent decision making on the program. That is what we would be doing. Not currently now. You're right. But I'm talking about in the future. OK. In all the right. Future. Thank you. Rick. I'm right. OK. okay. Next question. Okay, next question. I, I, we have taken up quite a bit of your time, Jack. You look like you wanted to ask one more question. I, I, didn't want to, if, if, I read, and then we I should read, wrap up. So. I read some of the uh, material of uh, Clinton. I just wanted to have him explain something to me because he's not a Clinton. You wanted a a return to voter ID precinct voting. Would you explain that to me? Well, yeah, because uh, when I grew up as a kid, we used to go to the precincts and show our ID to vote. And with this absentee ballot voting, there is no, and of course, in, here in Franklin County, I went down and witnessed and, and viewed and toured. And there's no way that we're, we've got any fraud going on in Franklin County. Matt Beaton does an incredible job. And that election staff is very well, very well in tune to make sure everything is done correctly. I wouldn't say that for sure around the rest of the state. And we've had lots of instances from our state in, in previous elections that uh, were very questionable. And I go clear back to Dino Rossi's uh, you know, election when more ballots just kept coming up and were found in King County. And, and we've all felt a little slighted here in this election process. And I would like to see us go back and I've had many arguments with Matt Beaton about this. He says, you'll never do it. You'll ne it'll never happen. But when you go to a precinct and you show your ID and you vote once and we assure the fact that we have, because that's why they're saying we have such a lower voter turnout. People don't think their votes being counted. And I want voter integrity. I want people to know that their vote counts and they only get to vote once. And you can be assured that only everybody's only voting once. That's how we're so going to get against, our voting. You're against, against mail-in voting? Is that what you're saying? Not 100%, no, because our military's got to have mail-in voting. And then the okay, elderly, I like the, the, the military. Well, the elderly. Would be. The I'm elderly. Sorry. The elderly. If the elderly have a hard time getting around, they should have that ability to have a mail-in. And my mom loves the mail-in ballot because it gives her the opportunity to sit down and, and look through the voter's guide. And she likes to do that. She likes to research before she votes. So there are pros and cons to everything. I just want the public to have that satisfaction of voter integrity and they can trust our, electro our electoral system because right now a lot of people don't. Rick, you think? Yes. What do you think of mail-in voting? Um, I, you know, there's times that I don't like it because I do know in cases that it, it's easy for somebody to take it and do their family vote for them and then have them sign it. 
but you know, I, I mean, that's up to the individual. They should, the individual should be protective of each one of those votes, every one of their ballots, and you'd be instructed that. But how are you going to claim that? That's another point and finger at something that may not happen. I, I don't know. I, uh, I think the mail-in voter is great. As I mentioned, my parents, it's great because how can you get there? And by the way, maybe this is a good spot for transit. They can take them if we don't have mail-in voting to the ballots. But see, so th there is there is just too much of this um, uh, these things that we need to materialize together and build a, something successful and not pick and think. I think that we should. Uh, mail-in vote is uh, allowable, and I think we need it for different people. And where you cut the line, I don't think is possible. So yes, continue with that. Okay, I think we need to wrap up. We've taken up, I think, more than the hour that we. That's my had. fault. <laughs> no, it's not your fault. But um, thank you so much, um, Commissioner Didier and Rick, for um, participating today. It was very insightful. So, um, Rick, I'm going to let you start with your closing. Um, so just go ahead and talk, and I'll I'll time you um, uh, okay. for two minutes. Well, thank you again for these important discussions. The voters of Franklin County have a clear choice. When I was in office, we didn't have these finger pointing things. We didn't have these things. Somebody said you didn't go to the office. You didn't go at the meetings. You uh, you didn't talk to state patrol. We didn't have this. I never had any of that. I collaborated with everyone and everybody together. Over the past four years, we've seen a performative politics in for the performative politics and clownish behavior of full display. It's embarrassing and it's not productive. We've had enough of the embarrassing county commission meetings, expensive lawsuits, and incompetence, the pol pol political extremeness and wasted tax daughter dollars must stop. It has led to the resignations of many of the valuable employees, servants, as well as respected county administrator, two HR directors, public works directors, an elected county assessor. Many employees are jumping ship and taking their skill set to Benton County or somewhere else. It's not a secret why. We know why. Franklin County wasted $1.3 million of taxpayer dollars over a reckless challenge to a lawsuit that we didn't need to fight. This election is about a basic competency, com competency in basic decency, the fundamentals. It's time to return effective, responsible leadership to Franklin County government. I'm dedicated to serving all the county residents. Vote Rick Miller to restore the competence and respectability to our county government. And please visit returnrick.com. Together, we can fix Franklin County. Thank you. Thank you, Rick. All right, Commissioner Didier, it's your turn. I'll just start the timer when you start talking. Thank you very much for this opportunity. As a county commissioner, I have pushed to make county accountable to not only the taxpayers, but to everybody who watches and, and listens. Through transparency and accountability, we have brought this county a long ways. We do not want to return to the past where the commissioners changed the meeting date to raise their salaries to 94,500. When I, when I arrived, they had just done that. The commissioners are a legislative body. We are, it's unique here in the county commission because we are the executive and the legislative. We don't need huge salaries. Like Commissioner stated, Commissioner Miller, uh, Rick Miller stated, I, uh, yeah, I have my own business and I work that and I also know all my material for every meeting. Other legislative bodies like city councils don't get huge salaries and huge car allowances. Neither should we. Local government shouldn't should be accountable to the people and the elected officers running local government. And I've got all their endorsements. Everyone that I asked for, I got their endorsements. I fought to change the commissioner's lower car allowance. And here we go. We found two people out of the four abusing that and they paid the money back. This is what I've tried to do. I do not want to try to go in there and be a career politician and 
and have a, a inflated salary with all the perks. I just want to serve my community for another term, and I believe in term limits, and I will be done. Vote Clint Didier for commissioner. Thank you very much. Thank you, Commissioner Didier. That was spot on, time wise. That was great. Thank you. We appreciate the time again. Um, thank you very much. It's insightful. Thank Good you. luck thank to you both. All thank right. you. Thank you. You guys have a good afternoon. Thank you, you too. Bye. Thank you.